Hey guys, welcome to another Zebra tutorial and this week I want to talk to you about the importance of aftertouch and key follow and all that stuff and how you um, assign that to controllers in Zebra. First off, of course, I'd like to remind you to subscribe to our YouTube channel and check out adsrsounds.com and also please comment and like and, or dislike even if you don't like the videos on YouTube because that, um, that really helps and it enables us to make more videos and um, with feedback, I sort of know what you guys want to learn and you can just give me random ideas or say Make crazy bass sounds or make arpeggiators or whatever and I'll try to do a video about that um, This week well, I already taught it <laughs> um, So I'm just gonna show you this patch very quickly so you can recreate recreate it and um, Then we're gonna talk about the F touch. So you probably have to pause the screen sometimes because I'm moving crazy fast. First, um, we're looking at oscillator one. It looks like this, very random. Um, you don't have to exactly recreate this, just make something crazy and you'll get pretty close. Then MSEG3 is on the uh, wave with an amount of 2.8. MSEG looks like this. And tuning is set to minus 36. Um, it's set to quad oscillators, so four oscillator copies. Volume is normal. Um, FX1 is a phase transfer. Um, the value is minus 20. Envelope 3 is on there uh, with an amount of 14. And oscillator FX2 is the scale effect. Then we go to the phase. Reset is on. Phasing is set to 46. And MSCG2 is on the sync with an uh, amount of 36, so three octaves. Then this one goes through the XMF filter, the cross modulation filter. Uh, the cutoff is set to 71. The first filter is at a low pass four, then the mode is set to parallel. Um, L pass, low pass in the uh, second filter slot, and it's set to analog. Then the offset is at seven, and the filter FM is at 18. I think we might ditch this one. No, we kind of need it. Okay, the filter FM is set to 18, LFO3 is on there, and the key follow is at 8.5, overload is at 1, we don't need to click, and MSEG4 is on the cutoff with an amount of 56. So let's look at the MSEGs. First, the MSEG2, which is just on the sync, I believe. Yes, um, with an amount of 36, so three octaves, and it looks like this, very simple. Uh, goes down and at the beginning and at the end it goes up again, it's a loop. Then MCG3 is on, where is it? Oh, it's on the wave, just, just on the wave here with an amount of 2.8. Looks like this, and the wave knob is set all the way down. And then MCG4. This one is giving uh, most of the rhythm and it's on the cutoff of the cross modulation filter. And then we have envelope, uh, sorry, LFO3, which is controlling the filter FM and also the volume of the second oscillator. Make sure the second oscillator looks like this. Um, tuning can be set to 24. Um, wave doesn't really matter. No, not really. Um, so the volume is controlled by LFO3, no effects, no phasing. And LFO3 is just a saw down loop at 116 and sync set to gate. And then envelope 3 is on, where is it? Yeah, it's just on the f phase uh, transfer of um, oscillator FX1 with an amount of 14 and it's set to loop. Uh, one bar, decay is set to 50, fall rise all the way to the left and uh, loop decay is on so if you don't see that you have these three empty dots here you can right click you say loop decay, I have a lot of videos about that so that's it, that's the sound and um, I'm sorry if I went too fast but I really want to talk about the, um, the aftertouch so if you have aftertouch on your keyboard that means that you can press the key harder after you already uh, press the key 
and you can hold it and, and, and press harder to get a different modulation source. So for example, if I set the F to touch, here you can find it in the list, it's called A touch. If I set it to the offset, um, I can just hold the key normally and nothing happens. But then when I press it harder, it's controlling the offset now. And I can set it to a lot of uh, parameters at once. So I can set it on tuning, for example, give it uh, an octave. And I can set it to the filter cutoff, maybe. After touch. And there's just so much great stuff that you can do with this. I could also, for example, set it to the decay of envelope 3, and that is going to be interesting because envelope 3 um, makes that looping sound. You hear that sort of noisy loop that is um, made by envelope 3. So if I make this faster. going to do that oh so i can control that with the f touch as well choose envelope three and then say decay and then we have to set a negative amount because we want it to go down and if i want to be even more fancy i would do the same for envelope one set it to loop decay fall rise all the way to the left sustain all the way down also set it to one bar loop and decay to 50. Now the envelope is looping. I can set this a little bit faster to, if I set it to 25, the loop is gonna be exactly twice as fast. And now I can control this loop speed with the after touch as well. And this is gonna be cool. Decay, a negative amount. And if it goes really fast, the envelopes start distorting, and that's when you hear that high sound. That one, and we, it's it's cool sound, but we don't want that for now. So let's set it quite subtly. And the other cool thing about this is that we can um, record the aftertouch and all that stuff inside the MIDI region. So when we're in Logic, I think it works kind of the same in Ableton. But now when I press record, I recorded that note and you can see here that um, it's giving all these lines and that means that the aftertouch is now inside this media region So I can save this media region. I can drag it around um, But the modulation settings still will be the same and Of course, I have to set the loop start And if I press I think command Y yeah, then we can see it inside logic and we can change the modulation here. So now we could change the speed of the loop. So I think that's a really cool uh, feature. I'm gonna disable this loop for now. Um, just set the sustain, and I'm gonna remove the aftertouch from these decays and just leave it on the offset of the cross modulation filter. Now we 
can mess with this a little bit. And now when we have this set, we can set it after touch to a lot more stuff and see what it does. For example, let's set it to the face uh, transfer of uh, oscillator fx1 so let's choose that one here oscillator one um, and then we have to say um, fx1 mod depth no value value <laughs> and we can get crazy sounds this way um, let's set it to the cutoff in the other direction and maybe one last one to the uh, overload so um, let's see overload we have to be careful with this one And now when we um, bounce this and make audio out of it, we have this crazy loop with weird sounds in it. And we can just choose a part that we like best. For example, this part. And then we can stretch that, for example, make it twice as long. And then we like this part, so we can cut that out again. And this way you can make a pretty crazy uh, bass sound and especially with the, with the aftertouch and that stuff and once you're starting to use the mud wheel it's really gonna give um, weird, unexpected, and often great sounds. A bit of reverb on it. And then we can let it slow down at the end. Say it like this. So that is um, often how I come up with my uh, with my drop sounds. And remember that making it audio also gives you a lot of extra flexibility, and you can now uh, reverse it and um, cut it at different pieces, and then uh, glue it together again. For example, let's see what happens when we uh, reverse this one. Let's see, functions, reverse. I like this one. So pretty cool, right? I hope you uh, now get an idea of what you can do with this. I know I went really quick, but um, again, when you when you think this stuff is interesting, just let me know and I can do more videos about it and I can uh, expand a little bit on it. So thanks for watching and see you next week.